Thanks for tuning into this episode of the Human Performance Outliers podcast with Zach Bitter. When folks are either transitioning to like say a ketogenic diet, it seems like there's, there's just a little bit of a longer adaptation period if folks had kind of come from a background of being maybe a little more fat phobic or if they followed like very low fat diets. Is that kind of because of you're doing kind of what you were saying where most people aren't going to say, well, you know, I've been very high carbohydrate for a couple of years. Maybe I should go to moderate carb for a while and then get down to low carb and then keto and kind of take it as like a a slightly downward sloping staircase versus jumping from the top of the staircase. Uh, Is that something that pans out or is there like, is it still, if someone is like in that boat, is it better to, I guess, go cold Turkey and say, all right, I'm going to go. I mean, assuming that's what they want to do anyway. Um, obviously if someone's moderate high carb and they're feeling great and doing well that way, there's, you know, you've got to ask what's the point at, at a, to a certain degree, right. but um, yeah. Is there, is there a, a preferred route in most cases with that type of stuff that you've been able to tease out? So I would say from <clears throat> going from a high carb to a keto diet, depends on the reason why they're doing it and what is the the risk, right? So if they said, Hey, you know, I'm doing this under the, the guise of my physician and I'm a uh, just uncontrolled type two diabetic. And my doc says he's going to supervise me to do a ketogenic approach. Yeah. That's probably a little bit more on the cold Turkey side, probably going to be a harder transition, but you could argue you're doing so much damage on the other side, then it's probably kind of worth that quote unquote risk. If you're a healthy person and you're just like doing it for shits and giggles, eh, I would say a more moderate approach is going to be better, right? Because you want kind of time to uh, transition, you know, your insulin levels, your glucose may be a little bit kind of wonky. A lot of it depends upon, you know, how well are you using fat at rest and during low intensity, moderate exercise. You know, that's a lot more variable than what people realize. Um, I did a study on that. Gadecki did a study. Uh, Hell just did a study in 1999, showing that how well people use fat, uh, low to moderate intensity exercise, overnight fasted, varies from like 23 to 93%, right? Some people are really, really good at it. Some people are just horrible at it. And these are recreationally healthy, quote unquote, people. So if you're on that low end of the fat oxidation spectrum, doing some fasted training, you know, training your body to use fat more as a fuel, I think is going to make your uh, transition into a ketogenic diet uh, a lot better. Again, for myself, if, you know, I've done fasting and done some other stuff enough that I could transition harder if I had to. So for me personally, I even carry like little ketone esters in my bag for kiteboarding. I'm like, if I'm 20, 30 feet up in the air and I screw up and get dropped on my head and, you know, I think I have maybe a TBI before I can get a formal diagnose for me personally, I'm going to put myself in ketosis at a pretty high level as fast as I can, because I, I believe that the risk of not doing that may outweigh doing a very, very hard transition. Again, that's not necessarily medical advice. That's just what I would do personally. I do think there is some advantage, although the research is limited on uh, ketones being a better fuel uh, post TBI. Uh, Again, that's probably debatable, but that's what I would do personally. So I think it goes back to what is the reason you're doing? What is the risk of not doing it? Um, In my case, I know that if I do a ketogenic approach, I'm pretty safe that there's probably not much of a downside, right? I'm pretty convinced that, yeah, I'm probably not going to do anything harm. How much benefit would I have, you know, post getting dropped on my head? Eh, I don't know, but I don't think I'm going to do anything on the negative downside. So I'll hedge my bet and kind of hope that the upside is a little bit better. Um, if I'm just doing it for, you know, eh, I think it might be interesting. The times I have done it, I've done much better by doing a more gradual approach. Um, over time, I have played with the, the faster transition with myself and a few athletes. And you can go from high amount of fat use to high amount of carbohydrate use. You can get those pretty darn good. But what I've seen is unless you're someone like yourself who uh, has an ketogenic approach for quite a long time and trying to go from moderately higher carbs to like hardcore, like keto, and those transitions still seem to be pretty hard. And I'm not entirely sure why that is. I mean, to go from a normal high carb diet into ketosis, the fastest way without using supplements is 
probably some form of exercise, deplete the crap out of glycogen and then just fast and then just start having a ton of fat. (laughs) And you're probably going to feel like poo when you do that. But, you know, I think that's probably a faster way to get there. Again, assuming you're a healthy person and your body's ability to use fat is relatively high. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know of any tricks to do those transitions faster, I guess. Yeah. I mean, I think you're, from what I've seen anyway, you're, you're spot on where it comes down a lot to the individual and kind of what the context of the situation is. I think for, for me personally, I would consider my transition really smooth. I think it was. Thanks for tuning into this episode of the human performance outliers podcast with Zach Bitter. 